Well, hello, everybody. I'm so glad that you joined us. And listen, we are in Homa, Louisiana on a mission trip. And we're getting ready to have a huge Christmas party. Now, you know Lane. You've seen her on several broadcasts. And Lane, just step back a minute. And this girl has been working. She has, no one can touch her table. I'm telling you. We'll have to, it's getting ready to be filled with, with all kinds of food. But she has been decorating. And we just found out, Chastity, that her maiden name is Pardue as well. Lane Pardue. And this is Chastity Pardue. So already something in common. So we just wanted... We wanted to, to just pull her in, and she's busy, busy hands. <laughs> she's all over the place, but it's going to be with so many people tonight and families and children, and we can't wait to, to just share the love of God with them. And uh, so, but Chastity, you have got an incredible story. Tell it, girl. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, so um, we want you to share, you know, just from your heart. Guys, you can't believe that she don't look like what she's been through. She's a beautiful lady um, inside and out. But So the name of our devotion today is called So Beautiful. There was a time when you didn't feel that, right? Very much so. Very much so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't be hard, hard for me to talk loud, so I'm going to try. <laughs> she didn't feel very beautiful, and her her life went on a turn. You said that you had you grew up in a very abusive uh, home. Yes. So just go on with your story. I'm telling she can just tell it and she's going to take you on a ride and she's going to, you're going to know what the significance of the word beautiful is. So stay with us. So before I was even born, my mom was with my real father and he was an alcoholic and very abusive. My mother was, a, um, was an alcoholic and an addict as well. And whenever I was born, before I was even born, my mom had been getting abused. So the abuse carried on into after I was born. Well, my mom decided to leave him and she met a man who is my stepfather. She was so in love with him because he never abused her, never talked down to her, but his abuse turned towards me. But because it wasn't happening to her, she acted like she never saw it. So from the time I was about three years old until I left when I was 14, I lived in horrible conditions. They were doing drugs and alcohol and would leave us with different family members randomly, then come pick us back up. Wow. Um, or they would just leave us at the house and me being the old, older sibling, I would have to take care of my sister. So whenever they would come back, um, I was terrified. I, I hated being around them. I hated everything. This is what age at this point? Um, I'm going to say maybe five, six. Five or six years old. Okay. I, I hated everything. Um, I knew I was unhappy. And they got into some situation where they ended up owing somebody a lot of money. And they told my 19-year-old aunt that they would sell us to my aunt um, for a certain amount of money. And so she did. And she came and picked us up. And she said that when she picked us up, she found us at a dirty motel. We had no underwear. Our hair was matted. We had no shoes. And the only wow. outfit we had was what we were wearing. Um, so she picked us up and took her back to her house. And when we saw the refrigerator, she said, me and my sister, and I can remember this. We stood in front of the refrigerator and we were just like, wow, like, food. there's food. Like, <laughs> wow. can we eat? And so she, um, you know, we lived with her for almost a year. And it was the best year. And then wow. my parentals um they came and picked us back up now you said what happened at eight years old eight years old is when i started doing drugs and drinking and um hanging out with older kids i would skip school and i would go and hang out with these older kids um who were not doing the best things and would get uh me into a lot of situations now you became homeless Mm -hmm. At what age? Um, 14, well, 15 was the first time, um, and I was homeless for about a year. And then when I, will be, when I was in my early 20s, I became homeless, and I was homeless for about four years. Chastity, you said you were kidnapped. Yes. And for how long? Um, it was a few months, and it was a part of a 
local sex slave trade. And of course, I was already a drug addict at this point, so it's not like they had to force drugs on me. And when I started realizing that I was losing large amounts of time and I would remember doing drugs in one place, I would wake up and it would be hours or days later and I would be in a completely different place with no recollection of how wow. I got there. Um, so events kind of happened. I ended up breaking into a house and got arrested because I had a illegal firearm on me. So I, I was facing at the time potential federal prison time. And was that when you shot someone that you're... That, nope, okay. this was before. Okay. So um, I went to jail and in the jail, there was this woman who walked up to me and she's like, I know you. Um, and I was like, no, you don't. And she's like, you're, I'm not going to say the name, but she said, you're one of his girls. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, I know who he is, but I'm not one of his girls. And she proceeded to tell me what he does. And he would mix GHB in my shots of meth. And when I would do them, um, I would have no memory, which the GHB is a date rape drug. So he would sell you. And he would sell me to... Who knows? I, I have no idea. Um, but it made sense when I started thinking back about different things. Because you know when certain sexual things have been done, how your body reacts. So it, it makes more sense to me, but I, n I just didn't think about it at the time. Um, so that's when I got angry. And um, I did spend a few months in jail, but they ended up dropping the charges. Um, God. Yes. That's the only reason why. Because that's when you, you shot him, right? Yep. So we, I got out and um, I got to thinking, I'm like, all right, well, he's not going to do this. Like, I'm not the one. I was super gangster back then. Now I'm Jesus gangster, you know. <laughs> so I said, I'm not the one. So I got a crew together and we decided to go handle business. And um, so we went to his house and... They did their part. I decided I was going to shoot him in the face because you're not going to do this. You're going to take my identity. I'm going to take yours. Um, he lived. Thank you, Jesus. Um, but at the time, he ended up... Stat well, I was, of course, in that life of sin. I was dating a female. And he stabbed her brother 12 times, punctured his lung all kinds of other stuff. So we had to, we were calling the, the ambulance. We weren't going to just let him die. So when the cops came, I handed him the gun. I said, I did it. And um, they said, all right. But they knew who he was and the reputation that he had because he had been in federal prison. He had attempted murder before. So they actually ended up putting me in um, protective custody. So you had just snapped. Oh, pretty yeah. Pretty much. It's like, I mean, when you realize what had taken place. Mm -hmm. And it was like you, you felt you had nothing else to lose, right? Oh, yeah. I didn't have anything else to right. lose. I was at the bottom of the bottom. Now, you said that you tried to commit suicide how many times? 150 times. 150 times. I mean, I could go into exaggerations of every way that I did, but let me just tell you, I've tried every way. Although I really want to say hanging myself from a tree with a dog's leash was not the way for me, <laughs> instantly. I regretted that because it was terrifying. <laughs> and thank God I have really long legs because I swung myself to the other part of the tree. But and I'm laughing now because of how sad you get in that place and how ridiculous everything seems. And I, can you imagine me like, oh my gosh, trying to swing myself to the other side of the tree so I can step on a branch and be like, all right, God, this is, or not even God, because I didn't know God at that time. But I was like, all right, that's not the way I want to go. So, um... Um, one of the last times that I had tried to commit suicide, I filled a syringe with household cleaners, bleach, anything I could mix up, and I had it in my arm, and I was sitting in the middle of the woods. And mind you, I didn't know God at this point. Somebody came walking through the woods. I had a wolf, and he was walking my wolf. Or my you wolf, had a my, wolf? A literal wolf? Yes, a literal wolf. And a I, wolf. I licked my finger when I first met him, and I, I rubbed it on his nose. And he would follow me everywhere I went. Everywhere. You met him in the wild? Mm -hmm. When I was because homeless. Because she was homeless. Yeah, when I was homeless. So you made friends with... And he was so sweet. I called him Timberland because, you know, the boots and the wolf. Anyways, so um, he would sniff me out everywhere I went. Wow. If he would sleep, I would walk a certain path and I would wait for him to wake up. And I would watch him sniff to come find me. So this guy comes walking up with Timberland next to him. 
and he finds me sitting in the middle of the woods with the syringe in my arm and he's like what are you doing and I was like just go I mean just I'm done and he he was like okay he said but you know you got a lot more to live for and he's like I'm gonna leave you to it and I said, all right. And my little wolf, he sat down next to me and he looked at me and he started nudging me with his little nose and he wow. looked at me and I was like, son of a biscuit. That's not the word <laughs> I said. Um, but I sat there for probably about 45 minutes with that syringe in my arm debating on whether or not I should actually do it. Decided not to. 150 unsuccessful times, I'm just not good. I'm, I'm not good. I'm not successful at it. Thank you, Jesus. God kept you from taking your yes. life. And you know what? Let's talk about when you went to a church and they had a ministry for the homeless mm -hmm. and you were hungry and you said you were stinky and dirty. Mm -hmm. You didn't, you felt ugly, right? Mm -hmm. You didn't feel, I mean, that's why you're going to understand this title. It's, I mean, it just touches my heart. You were getting ready to pack up your tent, right? Yes. Tell so, me about this. I had been up for days. I super skinny, 98 pounds. Hair's dirty because where are you supposed to wash it at? Smelly, tired, um, hungry. Go to this church where they feed everybody, and I sat down and I'm just trying to eat my food, just trying to get out of there. And this woman came and sat next to me, and she looked me dead in the eyes, and she said, "You are so beautiful. God loves wow. you so much." And I looked at her, I was like, "What?" And I said. First of all, I don't know who you are, leave me alone. And she said, well, I just want to tell you how wow. much you mean to God. And I was like, if God loved me so much, he would not let me live the way that I'm living. And so um, I'm sure she said some other stuff. I don't remember. I was so freaked out in the moment. Like, who is this woman? Why is she telling me I'm pretty? First of all, like, look at me. So I got, I left the church, I got on my bike, and I started running, like, just just going as fast as I could. I'm like, I'm getting away from this crazy place. I'm going to my <laughs> tent. I'm packing it up. Like, where am I going to take it? Like, you to would, another you part didn't want to receive it, right? It was no. just, like, too hard to receive My it. heart was completely blocked. My, it, I was not in the place to receive it. So I finally get exhausted, and I stop, and I get off my bike, and I'm sitting there, and there's this maple tree above me. Not heart-shaped leaves, y'all, right? And this leaf just falls. And wow. lands next to me, and it was in the, the shape of a perfect heart. And I wow. was like, this is really weird. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. So I just pick it up, and uh, I put it in my pocket, and I just left. And then I got to my tent, and I'm like, where am I going to even go? Like, what am, where am I trying to go? Like, another part of the woods is ridiculous. So I ended up staying, and I continued to do drugs. Um, and then, months later, I hit a point in my life again for the 60 billionth time where I was done. At this point, I had been to many mental institutions. I had been through several bouts of jail. I had been through homeless shelters, homeless, living in the woods, living. I had been through it all. I lost four, three of my children at this point. I was done. I didn't want to live anymore. So me and my um, current husband, he's sober now too. He, um, we got into a physical altercation, and at this time, at this night, we had a hotel room. He kicked me out the hotel room, so of course I had them let me back in. I'm like, oh no, no. Well, he was asleep by that point, and um, I sat down on the floor and I just cried. I was like, I hate this. I hate everything. I hate myself. I don't even. I never, for years, looked at myself in a mirror. Not ever. Wow. Not ever. And those words wouldn't leave your mind, would no. they? Like you're nope. so beautiful. Yes, because God, when God plants that seed, yes. even though your heart is not in a place to accept it, God knows, and He will make that gr that seed grow because He already has. He created you. Right. He already has everything within you that needs to blossom it. You just have to hear it. It's, it's vitally important that yes. even though the smallest little things, like her just sitting there saying, you're, you're so beautiful and you're loved, it, made have, it might have seemed insignificant to her, but mm. that changed the whole course of my life. Wow. Well, when you think about what uh, his word says in Psalms 139 and 14, I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous. Look, you can quote this, can't you? Mm -hmm. Marvelous are your works and that my soul knows very well. You yes. didn't know that at the time, oh, no. but now you can say my soul knows it very well. And so tell me what happened though. You experienced this 
Radical. Ceiling opening. Radical okay. Change. Tell us about that. So I told, I said to God, I said, I don't know if you're real. I don't know, I don't know if I can even trust you. I said, but I'm, I'm going to try this. And you better take my life or you better take me in your hands because I can't do this anymore. And when I tell you the ceiling, I don't even know if it necessarily opened up, but that's what I call it. It yes. opened up in this most glorious, heavenly, wow. golden light. And I mean, it was so heavy that I just laid on the floor and just cried because wow. I felt everything and nothing all at once. It, I can't even describe it. Like, I, there's no words. It wow. was the most intense, beautiful color I've ever seen. It was amazing. That was the moment he changed your life yes. forever. But I didn't know it. So I lay down, I'm like, okay, and I cried myself to sleep. When I woke up the next morning, I was so sick. And when I tell you I felt like I was dying, I thought I was dying. So I stayed in this hotel room for seven days. On the eighth day, I woke up, everything was fine. It like was nothing happened. And when you think about what was being taken from you, you were dying to, to the I old died Cassidy, to my old right? Self, and dying he to your old in self. Me something new. Wow. I something. had given my heart to him. And when I surrendered in that moment where he came down to me, I always laugh and I tell people it's amazing how through my total submission came my complete freedom. But it's true. Wow. And that's the only way to describe it is that I had to fully submit myself mm. and give him my heart for him to be able to remove it from me and create something new in me. And so, uh, I actually beautiful. just talked about this the other night, which, yeah, anyways. Um, but it's true. You have to be willing and receptive to open up because he can do anything. That's He's right. God. He created the whole universe. And it says in his word that he can create and do all things. So John eight thirty six says, so if the son sets you free, free, you, shall be. <laughs> you will be free indeed. And indeed there means really free. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, you've walked free for how long, how many years now? January 7th will be eight years, eight years. Wow. That's incredible. And you know, um, I love this scripture that you've even got it on your you've got it on your arm and can you tell me what it says it's song song of solomon it's song of solomon 210 he calls me beautiful one wow arise my darling my beautiful one come mm -hmm. with me so now she has come with me and er, come with him and you know what how his word says that how beautiful are the feet that carry the gospel that carry the good news mm -hmm. so now she is sharing the good news with others mm -hmm. and god is using your life and so, I mean, it's an incredible journey, incredible testimony, but you can see the transformation. I love what you said. It was the complete surrender mm -hmm. that brought your total freedom. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful story. Amen. So, you know, would you just give a word of encouragement uh, to those listening um, that may be where you were and that feel like they have no hope? And I would like for you to, to pray for us, pray for them that are listening, okay? okay. Just a word of encouragement and then pray for them doesn't matter what you've done and what people have said to you because God knows who you are That's right. and he made you for his purpose and the path that you may be walking though it may seem dark it is for his glory and he will bring you out of it yes. if only you should ask and you are loved you are enough you are special and you are perfect don't listen to anybody else except for what Jesus has to say and if you're not sure what he thinks about you Close your eyes and pray to him and say, God, what do you, what do you call me? And he will tell you. I promise you that. He'll tell you that you're so beautiful, yeah. right? He told me I was mother to many. <laughs> wow. <laughs> will you lead us in prayer? Surely. Lord Jesus, I thank you for today. I thank you and I come to you with the most humble heart, Lord God. I thank you for my life and for my messes that came to, became, to become your messages. Mm. I thank you for my tests that now become your testimony. I thank you for every single person out there, Lord God, for every single struggle that they seem to go through. And in the darkest moment, Lord God, just let them know that though they walk in the valley of the death, they are not alone and they have no reason to fear. You are the God who created us and you alone will get us through anything that we have that is blocking our path. I pray against all principalities that try to come upon people and to hold us down and to stop your kingdom from the glorious work that you have for us because we know that the battle is already won yes. Lord God we just yes, have to Jesus. know that in our spirit and in our heart that we cannot put you in a box that we cannot hold your blessings to be smaller than what they actually are 
And I thank you for every single person that loves on an addict, that loves on a mother mm. who has lost their children. I thank you for those mothers that have lost their children, Lord God. And I just ask that you bless them and that you help them to be restored with their families. I pray for the sex slave rings to be stopped in the mighty name of yes, Jesus, in Lord Jesus God, name. to protect our women, to protect our children, Lord God, because you are the only one that can do it. And I praise you and I thank you with every fiber of my being. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, I will always pray. Amen. Amen. That's beautiful. Thank you. You are so beautiful. Thank you. You are so beautiful. <laughs> Listen, God loves you. Don't forget that. Amen. We love you and have a great rest of your day. Merry okay? Christmas. Merry Christmas. Bye-bye.